This is a short list on how to identify fake news and what you need to do to be better informed when investigating any news you see anywhere, including social media, friends and family, and paid news outlets. Most of these people have a vested interest in you believing in what they are saying. We need to be hesitant in believing anyone who profits off you buying into what they're saying. The following are logical fallacies, and they're used to strengthen poor arguments. The first thing is confirmation bias. Simply put, this is only seeking out information that benefits your position. For example, let's say you think the red and white football team is the best. You go online to find out how good they are, but most articles say that the blue football team is the best. So you click on that dreaded second page of Google and you finally find an article that says the red team is number one. That's confirmation bias, and it's what the movie The Social Dilemma is all about. To truly dissect the information, you must be willing to accept that your point of view is wrong. Ultimately, the decision to believe the source comes from you. A good thing to keep in mind is your own confirmation bias in reading and the author's bias in writing. To get an accurate portrayal of what you're researching, use multiple sources. I personally like to look at information from an external source, namely newspapers outside the United States. Okay, so now we're getting into the actual fallacies. These are just a few. There are a bunch out there, but these are the ones I think are most relevant. I'm going to go through these quickly, but check the description to link to the articles I pulled this info from. Grandma. I don't know why they say that there's global warming. It snows as much now as when I was a little girl. This is the first one I'm choosing to put on this list, and for my research, it's not actually a logical fallacy, it's an anecdotal fallacy. This is the I did X and why never happened to me. It's a common denial method. The real danger of this one is you're turning the person with only personal experience into an authority. And since everyone is different, they're not an authority. The next one is a red herring logical fallacy. This is presenting relevant issues as a distraction to the real issues. Uh, here's an example. Wife, we have no food, we need to go to the grocery store. The husband replies, did you say McDonald's is on DoorDash and they have a new burger? It's not a lie, but it is a distraction from the real issues, which is they need to go to the grocery store. This next one is a straw man argument. I'm sure you've heard that before. This is essentially putting words in the opponent's mouth. This is done by big, untrue statements that distract from the argument. Uh, here's an example. John, I think I'd rather have an electric car. Heather. Oh, you think one car can save the planet? Why do you hate the gasoline industry? Do you know how many dinosaurs had to die for that gasoline? I can't believe you hate dinosaurs. Now, obviously, John didn't say anything about hating dinosaurs, and Heather's just using it as a distraction so that uh, in the headlines it would read, John hates dinosaurs. Next, we got false economy uh, or false dilemma. These are arguments that don't allow for gray areas. They're forcing issues to black or white discussions without deviation. The issue with this is it fails to take into account other options. It's just a lot in advertising. Buy our berries or you'll overpay. There are other places to buy berries, and so this is a false dilemma. Next, we have sunk cost. This is uh, when it's argued that you should stick with something because you've already invested in it. The problem with this is that it rejects change. We've always done it this way, so why change now? Well, sometimes it's better to scrap it all and start over. Nona. What are you making there, a movie monster for crash commercials? Claw, no, it's pizza for dinner. Nona, it doesn't look like pizza. Claw, well, I misread the recipe, but I'm sticking with it. Nona, maybe you should do something different or start over. Claw, I've already been working on this for an hour and used so many ingredients. Just because we've used up all that time and money doesn't mean we can't start something new for change. That's sunk cost. Now we're at appeal to authority or using an authority figure to justify your argument. This is not a fallacy, and only becomes so when the authority is misused, misrepresented, or untrustworthy. According to the University of Georgia, sources should come from articles or books that are peer-reviewed, trade, or professional manuscripts, or from well-established magazines and newspapers. The way I trust a source is to think if I would use it on a college paper or a YouTube video. Laura, that cough sounds bad. You should take some medicine. Scott. Dr. Fresnel said that the medicine contained a bunch of stuff I don't need. He said it'd be better just to let it run its course. 
Laura, Dr. Fresnel has his PhD in ancient Roman languages. Obviously, he's a doctor, but he's not the doctor you need, and that's appeal to authority. Finally, we have equivocation. Equivocation is using ambiguous language to confuse an audience. This is intentional, dishonest, and malicious. The bigger issue is when the information is passed around and the language is changed to encompass something that you never outright stated. Kind of like a game of telephone. Tom, Jason, you know Cokes are bad for you. Jason, I only had one Coke. Jason did only have one Coke, but he also had 12 Dr. Peppers. So it's not a lie. Maybe a lie by omission. But you're, what you're saying is true. But there's more to the story. And that's equivocation.